I'm very excited to tell you all about this new loom. You've got what's called here is the headstock and this is the tailstock. Uh, these which are called the warp rods. Now they come like this and you have a spare one so you end up with three. And the other thing that comes with this loom are these little plastic um, ends or stopper ends that you use to to position the warp rod in place. So how you do that is that it comes very small hole because you want a firm fit. So what you do is you simply thread it through these two little round lug things here and then you just simply pop that on and then you push it in place so that it sits nice and firmly. You've got these screws here. Now this holds this tail stock in place. Now you can move this by changing these little screws or nuts up and down so you can go as small as you like or as long as you like. Now the only thing you have to do to prepare your um, first piece to make is to measure between these two rods. Now this measurement needs to be reasonably accurate. So for example if you wanted to make a bracelet that was 8 inches in length and you had you knew that the clasp would be about an inch then you would want from here to here to be 7 inches. So you would measure it from the including the rod to the other side to get your exact measurement. And that's the only thing that you need to take a little bit of time over. Once you've got that, you simply put it in place nice and firmly with your wing nuts so that it doesn't move and you're ready to go. The other thing you get with your loom is these little pegs. Now, if you see, they've got a little slot along the side there. So what we do to thread up, now the threads that go this way are called warp threads. So we're going to thread up our warp threads first. And what you do is get, give yourself um, a tail, maybe as long as you like, and then just put your thread into the little slot and then you can wind it around once or twice and then go back through the slot again. And then I'm going to pop it in to the second hole here in the front of the loom. I'm coming over here and then over the top of here and then I'm going to bring my thread underneath and notice I'm keeping a reasonably firm tension and then I'm going to come along here underneath and then back over. Now this makes one, two, three warps and obviously what you do is you just continue along. So over here under here, up and over, and along. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five warps. Now you have to make one more warp than beads. So if your piece is nine beads long then or wide, you would do 10 warp threads. So I'm only going to do a small one. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now if you finish on an even number, then what you do on your last one, so if I'm doing five beads wide and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six threads, I finish with this on top. If I was going to do six beads wide, I would need a seventh thread. And so I'd come up and I'd finish with this on top of here. And I'll just show you how I finish off. So I'm going to actually finish with one less. So I'll just bring it and I'm on top of here now so that you can see. So what I do is I get another peg and I think, right, well, it's got to go to about there. So I'll just pop that in. 
Yep, go around once or twice and then go back through here again. And then I can pop it into here and then I can tighten it up here so that now I've got a nice tight finished piece. You tighten it up like a guitar string. Now if I had finished up here then I would be putting it into one of the holes here at the front or if you prefer you can pop it into the wider thing at the back and that way it's out of your way. So now we're ready to begin. So I can just trim off my thread here now and you can keep it a little bit long if you want to because you can use one of these threads later on to attach your um, clasp or in the case of a, um, a bookmark, a little fringe or something, you can use it to bead with. So now I'm just going to bring these at about the width that I'd like them for my beads. Just take my time with it and get it ready. Now the next thing that you have included with your loom is called your thread separator or the warp separator. So what you do with this is you simply go, you know, over, under, over, under, over, under. And that way it makes it a little easier for you to begin. Okay, so we've got that in place. And now I'm just going to get myself some thread. Now you can make this as long as or short as you like, um, that's comfortable to use. Um, because you can easily stop and start uh, halfway through. It's not difficult. Now this bit you're going to love because if you look at the end of the loom here, my needle is right here because there's a little magnet at the end. So I'll never lose my needle because there it is. So now I'll bring this into position again and I'll just Again, before I thread my needle, I get the end of my thread. Now this is called my weft thread because it's going across. So this is the warp and this is the weft. So again, leave myself a small tail, pop it through the little peg, around once or twice, back through the little slot, go in there. And then I'm going to put this one in the outside peg here. There we go. And then I'll just thread uh, my thread onto a needle. And get some beads and we can begin. Alright, so just to recap here a little, I've got my threads in position here and I'm going to be using a size 8 seed bead but I just want to make sure that these are positioned nicely just so that my threads will fit in between these gaps. Now I'm just turning over the warp separator little card so that it's easier or less distraction for you to see there and you can see it more plainly and you see I'll just do it again sort of under, under over under over, under over. So there I've got them separated. Now that just, you only do this for the first one or two rows and it just helps you separate things out and of course and get them in position. So I've got my thread on the left. I'm going to take it under with my needle, under the warp threads all the way and then I'm just going to lay the thread on top of the separator card just for my first row and then I'm going to pick up some um, seed beads. I need one, two, three, four, five and then I'm going to bring them down to the end of my thread. I'm going to use my finger and I'm going to pop the beads between the threads and I'm going to use my finger to support the beads while I position them properly. So now as you can see I've got these two threads between these beads so I'm just going to lift up the thread and position them in place so that they sit 
between the warp threads where they're supposed to sit. And I'll just pick up this fellow that fell down there and pop him in as well. There we go. Now they're all in position and they're all happy where they're meant to be. So you can see here I've got one bead between each of the threads. And now the next thing to do is I'll get my needle and I'm going to take, as you can see, remember we were under this thread here, I'm going to take my needle and bring it around back through the beads and I'm coming over this end thread and I'm actually going to make sure that my needle goes above each of these. Now you can use the blunt end of your needle if you're worried about splitting threads. I pr personally I prefer to use the tip but you just need to carefully go through one at a time and you see I'm sort of lifting back and forward so that I make sure that I'm actually going over these threads because if you miss one of your little beads will fall off. So then once I've got them all in position and you can check it to see that they're in position all you need to do now is pull your needle through and pull your thread through. And now they're all very nicely in position. So now I'll take my thread underneath again. I'll pick up my five more beads, pull them through to the end, put them in position. Now see how much easier that was? Much easier on the second row and then again around and back through these beads. And if you see I'm angling again to make sure that I go above the warp threads. So I've caught them all and then again I can just pull my thread through. Now once I've pulled that through I can now, I don't need this separator thread anymore and now I'm going to bring them down to the warp to the bar. So I'm going to put my needle on the nifty magnet so I don't have to worry about it and then I'm going to bring this down to the warp bar just slide them down with your fingers just bring them right down to the bar and pull on the thread to tighten it up. There we go it's nice and tight and that's nice and tight and now I'm ready to continue on so I'll just get my needle and then I'll start with my next rows so away I go three four five beads I'll show you one more time and then I'll just continue along so bring them down to the bottom see look how easily they pop in by using your fingers see how they pop up and then again with my needle, one, two, three, four, five, just make sure they're all in place and pull through my thread. Oops. And of course it gets caught. No problem, just undo it. And there we go. There. And now I'm away. And so I'll just continue on like that. I thought I'd just show you here how to repair a mistake. Invariably, we all make a mistake and what will happen is you might just miss uh, coming around and go under accidentally and then what happens is your bead drops off. So you've got two ways of repairing this. You can just pull this back out and if you see there very closely as I've pulled it I've got the little side thread and I can just grab that side thread and I can just bring it out. Then once I've got it to that point, take off your needle and pull the row out. I'll show you how to pop a bead back in there. So what you do is come back down to this row below and go through a couple of beads like we have here. Go back through bring your thread and then I'm going to jump up to the row above and go through this bead here. So see I've come up and then through here and now especially if I bring my thread 
underneath. Now I'm back in my starting position underneath the warp threads. So all I have to do is pick up that little bead that fell off, pop it back down to the end just like I do normally, pop him in position, make sure I go around the thread this time and over it and then go back through all of the beads. And then you'll see we're right back where we should be. If you find you run out of thread halfway through, and it, it's probably going to happen at some stage, especially if you like to work with a manageable size thread, then I'll show you how to tie off and start a new thread. It's quite easy. Now there's a couple of ways of doing it. Uh, you can literally just, you've got your needle and the thread here at the side, and you just come underneath this thread with your needle and when you're tying off don't wait until you've got no thread left at least have a good six or eight inches left so that you've got room to tie off and see I've made a loop over here then I'm just going to put my needle through and then bring it up so that it makes a nice little knot there at the side and then you can do another and then go back and start weaving back in the direction that you had come. So there we go, we're weaving back. And of course you can do another knot here and there. Now if you don't want to use, have a knot showing at the side, another way is you can just, this is the way I like to do it actually, is pop up between the beads like that. And then, oops, bring your thread in down here and catch under there. See I'm catching the thread in between one of the warp threads and then I'll make my little knot there. You see then it's completely hidden and then I can continue along just go back in through there and continue along and keep weaving. Finally when I've had enough and I've gone back a reasonable distance, um, you can just simply trim your thread. So just come in and give it a snip and then I'll bring in a new thread and I'll start, you know, quite a way back, come in at the side and then I'll bring my thread through until I'm left with probably about, you know, another six or eight inches. And then I'm going to tie a knot at the side here, just a surgeon's knot. So that's just left over right, like that. And I actually take it around twice. And then I can just bring that in as a knot at the side. Quite a nice firm knot and I'll I'll, I'll weave this tail in later on just like I did up here. I'll just go through and through and by weaving it up and back that makes it very secure. It also firms up my bracelet for me, all my little piece that I'm making. So now when I do my end pass I'm right back where I started and there we are now I'm ready to continue. Now I've come to the um, end of my piece and you can see there's a gap there enough just to do one more pass because you want to get it as close to this bar as possible. Now a little trick is just to push the beads down a little bit so that they buckle up a little. It's the only time you'll ever do this in beadwork. Um, so that you have a little bit more room to play with and you can either take your beads to the end of the thread and pop them in it's a little fiddly or you could even leave them on the needle as I did before and try and pop them in so whatever works easiest for you because you've got to get them between those little there we go now I think I'm there come there I'll just pull that through and just check. Have I 
got one there yes so I'm there so you just have to and sometimes you have to do the last one one bead at a time just to make sure it pops up over the thread there we go I think I'm there we'll just check that yeah seems good so now I can pull it through there we go and that's me done so what I'm going to do is I want to just end this off now I could just put a little knot there or I can go back to finish it off come back the other way and again I can either put a little knot here at the side like I did before with a little loop and come in the other thing you can do as well is you can come out after a couple of beads and then do a little knot over the thread here come up, or even on just this side might be easier if you can get to it it's just one in there just it just firms up your thread for you or knots it up so that you're a bit secure on your end especially if you wanted to tie it off and you know not have this thread you know cut it off straight at the end if you wanted to I'll just go through those last couple of beads now but I'm actually going to use this thread I think to you know maybe add it on to another piece I made earlier there we go so now I'm ready to take this off my loom so the first thing that I will do is I'm going to undo my little pegs from down here so I'll just pull them out and just undo them because they've been holding my threads okay let's put those aside and then the next thing is I will just undo my little stopper on one side and then just slowly pull this out and then it's just the same up here at the top just pull out the little stopper and slide off my piece now all I need to do is just massage it back out and you'll see that all I have left here is one piece at this end which I've left nice and long because if I wanted to I could put a clasp here or I could uh, which I may do is put a fringe because it's a little bookmark size now this side here I have one rather long piece again for the same reason and then I've got my original weft thread and my other warp thread so I'm just going to tie these two together in a little double knot that's it all ready to go I'll just weave these two in a little and snip them off and then I've got these two to play with my ends I'm going to show you how to attach a clasp like this to the end of your um, beadwork bracelet. Now it's quite easy to do uh, and you can use, I've just used a nice crystal for, um, the, for the, the actual toggle part of the bracelet. So if you don't like wearing metal this is a great alternative for you. So now if you look here we've got one, two, three, four, five beads across and what I have done here is I've gone three on this side three on this side so that's six so it's one extra bead than width before I've come up so with that in mind what I'm going to do this one is nine across one two three four five six seven eight nine across so therefore I think probably ten beads will work so therefore I'll put five each side so I'll thread on five beads one two three four five then I'm going to thread two to go up here so that's 
another one too and that will take me here and then I need to thread on beads around this loop. Now obviously you want to just thread on enough that will go over this little bead comfortably as a clasp so it's just really a little bit of trial and error so I'll just thread on a few more. So I'm just trying 14, 15 so I'll try 15 and I'll just see how that fits. So I've got my one, two, three, four, five beads there and here are my two for the stem. So I'll just bring this back around here and bring it through this bead just to try it. Well actually I'll bring it through the both but I really just want to try it to see if that will fit around now I don't think that's going to be big enough but we'll try it and see see if a little button fits through mm, no I don't think it will see so I think I'm going to need another one or two so it's just trial and error so I'll just thread on uh, a couple more maybe three and see how that goes so I'll try that out and then we'll try that with our button as well. This way if, if you're not sure you can just measure it easily and oh yeah that works nicely that's actually quite good size. I've made my loop I've come back through those two beads and now what I'm going to do is take another five beads over to this side and come back through around. I'm just going to bring that back around and I'm going to go all the way through this end. Missed one there, it's all right. And then the last one. I'm going to go back up, back up here, back around, down and back again to reinforce my bracelet. Now I'm going to add the crystal to this end. So again I've got my five each side and my two up the middle so that's one two three four five one two. Then I'm going to add the crystal and at the top of the crystal I'm going to add three more beads. Come around these three beads and through the crystal and then through the first two like that and then I'll pull that up and pull it up so see they sit on the top like that and then I'm going to add on my five more beads and then again just as before I'm going to bring my needle through the, the, the whole length of the end and then I'm going to bring it all around again just like before. You tie it off just like we've been doing all through the video going back and around and tying off your knots and finally tying your thread. So there's my clasp attached and then I can bring it through the end and there's my finished bracelet. It's very very easy to incorporate patterns into the bead weaving. In fact it's a lot of fun. Now you can use larger beads or really small beads for an intricate pattern. So I'll just show you how to read a pattern. Here's a nice simple pattern to start as a beginner and you'll see we've got some arrows here because it's a repeat pattern. So from here to here it repeats and carries on and in fact I'll show you one that I've made where you can see it much larger and you see the pattern just keeps going so you get this great zigzag right down the center of your bracelet. Now you can see it's one two three four five six seven beads wide which meant we needed eight warp threads and the repeat pattern will start here in the bottom corner. Now the fun thing is you can make your own patterns and if you just see under here here is some graph paper that we've designed which is just all these little bead slots so you can actually color in yourself work out the width 
work out your repeat and just make your own colors and your own designs. It's really easy and if you see that's exactly what this is. So now we'll begin. So I've got some blue beads and light blue and dark blue beads and if you see my first row is one dark blue, two light and then four dark blue. Now I'll just bring in my loom and I've already set it up with my warp threads and I've actually placed in the first row already and if you see and actually here's another great use for your warp separator is if you place it there you can isolate your row that you're on. So I've put one dark blue, two light blue and then four dark blue and you always read from left to right. So as you can see on here I've got my one dark blue, my two light and then my four dark blue. So now I'll move up to my second row and I have two, two and three. I'll just pop them in place. There they are. Is that right? No, you're not sitting correctly. So I'll just pop that there. There they are now. And then now I can just pop the thread through. That's it. And then bring them along. And you can see now that my pattern is starting to progress. I'll just bring this down to the end where it's meant to be. I can go up to the next row and I can see it's three dark, two light and two dark. Pop them in place. Make sure my thread's above the warp. And slide them along. And you can see my pattern is now starting to progress. So now if you see my pattern has gone full swing because I'm actually right back to the beginning repeat again. So if you look at the pattern repeat, you know this is our first line that we've just come back and, and, and done again, but if you look, if you carry along you'll see that this line which is the next one along is the same as the first. So when you're designing a little pattern uh, and you use your own graph paper you really only need this much but obviously you'll draw the whole thing out and then work out what is the repeat part of the pattern that you just need to, to um, keep working. Mm -hmm.